This is a polar graph. For every possible angle measure, a function determines how far away the curve is from the center point. You can imagine it like a rectangular function that's been wrapped around into a circle. All the horizontal lines become arcs of circles and all vertical lines verge out parallel to the origin. So you can graph any ordinary function into polar mode, but the functions that it is meant for are trigonometric functions. The first of these is the sine function. It starts at zero and then cycles smoothly between one and negative one. The cosine function has the exact same shape as the sine function, except that it starts at one. It is equivalent to the sine function, except that it is shifted over one quarter of a cycle. The tangent function is cyclic as well, but as it gets to the middle of a cycle, it zips off to infinity, zips in from negative infinity, and then slowly approaches zero. So with only the humble sine function, we can create a whole class of graphs which are referred to as roses. So let's begin with our radius is equal to the sine of the angle. We take the point which is smoothly oscillating between one and negative one, and we spin it around, and we get a circle. We do this with the cosine of the angle, and we get a circle rotated 90 degrees. In general, cosine functions are sine functions rotated 90 degrees, so they actually aren't that visually interesting, so we can ignore cosine for now. So what happens if we add a coefficient next to the angle? Let's say we double it. That would mean half the length of the cycle. And so it has time to go back and forth two times. It would look like this. The circle slightly distorts into petals and it turns into a flower. But we can go further. Triple it, we get three petals. But that's okay because we got there in half the time. Quadruple it, we get a shocking eight petals. Quintuple it, we get five petals. So what happens when you add a constant? Presumably it would be like taking a circle with that radius and adding the sine function on top of it. So let's slowly increase this number more and more, and oh my gosh, it's a starfish! Alright, let's go back to our normal sine function. Let's now take this number and turn it into a fraction. We get this. It's kind of disappointing until you realize you can extend this line and you can keep going. So let's try another fraction. And what about another fraction? And more fractions, and more fractions, and more fractions, and more, and more, and add two, and oh my gosh, it's a donut. So that's all these cool graphs, but you haven't seen them all. So watch this, and then you'll have seen them all. So let's look at the graphs of tangent functions. So let's begin basic. Okay, it looks like a propeller with extremely long blades. If we increase the coefficient by the angle, we get more blades. So what happens when we try to spread this function out? So why don't we try overlay these different functions on top of each other. So let's bring it all together. All right, that's enough for now, but stay tuned because we still have to talk about what functions of functions looked like and what functions added together looked like. So if you want that, you should probably subscribe. Thank you.